Hi, I'm Jane Wither from Amazon Web Services. Today we're going to walk through setting up your first Amazon Aurora database cluster. Aurora is a managed database service that's 100% compatible with the open source MySQL database with enhancements for availability, performance, and scalability. We'll see how each of these goals is addressed. Our Aurora cluster will consist of two database instances. One is the primary, which can handle both reads and writes. The other is a read-only replica. Let's get started. We'll log into the AWS console at console.aws.amazon.com and go to RDS under Database. As you can see, RDS stands for Relational Database Service. We'll check our instances and clusters, and we see that there are none. Go back to Instances and launch a database instance. You have a choice of which database engine you want to launch. We'll select Aurora. Aurora offers you a number of choices, and you can see the characteristics of each instance type. The performance characteristics of Aurora are much different from vanilla MySQL. So if you've been running MySQL somewhere else, like RDS MySQL, I suggest you first run a proof of concept with your workload to determine the right instance type for you. For this tutorial, we'll select T2 Medium, which is typically appropriate for a dev test environment. Next, we have to decide whether to operate in high availability mode with a read replica in a different availability zone, meaning a different location. We'll choose to have a read replica. We're not locked into what we just selected. If our database grows, we'll be able to scale it with bigger instances and more replicas, and then downgrade if we no longer need them. Then we choose a database name, which is stored in lowercase. We choose a master username, which must start with a letter, and set the password. We're just a few steps away from launching our Aurora cluster. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll go with the defaults. A few notes. An Aurora cluster has to be part of a virtual private cloud, or VPC. The VPC helps you control access to your database cluster, but you can configure permissions so that EC2 instances and devices outside that VPC can reach the Aurora cluster. You can add an identifier for a database cluster. You can also create a database within the instance. Let's go with the name tutorial underscore db. If you choose to enable encryption, you have to provide a key. You can decide the order in which you want to fail over across your different replicas. This is helpful, for example, if you're running production databases on larger instances and replicas on smaller instances. In that case, you'll want to make sure your production database fails over to another instance of the same type. Finally, you can customize your maintenance window as needed. That's it. We're almost there. Remember that Aurora is a paid service, so you'll incur charges if you click Launch DB Instance. But let's go ahead and launch the DB Instance. You'll see two new instances being created. This takes a few minutes as we provision the machines. Under the Replication Roll column, you'll see that one of these instances is the writer, and the other is the reader. We can see the names of the databases. We use the cluster endpoint to access our database from a MySQL client. As you can see, our database is publicly available. With that, our database is set up. We can now enter the cluster endpoint in your favorite MySQL client, connect, and fire away. Notice it's the same database names that we saw in the console. We've seen how Amazon Aurora makes it easy to set up a completely managed database cluster in the cloud with high performance and full MySQL compatibility. In other videos in this series, we'll learn administration topics like backups, replications, and migrations. If you have additional questions, refer to our online documentation at aws.amazon.com slash rds slash aurora slash resources. Thanks for watching.